what's going on, y'all? T-Bob here. And Jake as well. And you're about to watch a little OTB LSU. We're going to give you all the latest, greatest between LSU football, baseball, women's basketball, softball, and everything in between. Bottom line, if you want to talk Tigers, keep it locked, subscribe, like it, and uh, we hope you enjoy it. I want to go around the room here to start because with training camp starting, like we now know who the team is. Now, used to, you would know this during the spring. You know who your team was. Now, you might have some freshmen that would come in and they would play, not right away, but they, you know, third week at camp, you're like, all right, hey, we can't keep this freshman out of the lineup. But for the most part, in spring practice, you knew who your football team was and we would break it down and we would talk about positions. Now, you have an idea now, but now with the transfer portal, with guys coming in, guys coming out, like this is the first time you really get an idea of who truly is going to be your 22, your 44, guys that you count on out there. So I want to go across the room. Mario, we'll start with you. The guy that you're most excited to see how he plays in an LSU uniform as we start training camp. So we've talked a lot of offense the last couple of days with Taylor. You saw Daniels and our neighbors both on the Maxwell award list, uh, watch list, I mean, but I'm going defense for my pick, and I'm going uh, Omar Spates. Uh, coaches and teammates have been very complimentary of him this offseason. Great player at Oregon State for a long time. First team Pac-12 uh, honors last year, 83 tackles. He's supposed to contribute a lot at LSU. I'm curious to see how he how he looks in camp. All right, that is somebody that I absolutely, I would have selected him as well if you didn't. Uh, first team, all Pac-12 a year ago, uh, coaches, coaches. Second team, AP, don't care. No disrespect to the media, I'm part of the media. Coaches goes so much farther for me when it comes to all SEC, all Pac-12, all whatever. The coaches who watch the tape, who game plan against that player, that's who selected him first team, okay? The AP... It is what it is. I don't even know who got first team AP. I would assume it's from two large schools out there in the Pac-12. But him being first team coaches, and also, like, this wasn't the first time. Like, he has been a freshman All-American in 2019 as well. So it's not just last year. It's not just a one-year flash. I mean, he's done this over his career. And I understand that y'all were not staying up late watching Pac-12 after dark, unless you're Ronnie Ranch and you're chasing it at the end of the night. Got a bet out there. I get that, right? And this like this game that I'm about to talk about, like you could not find it. It was on the Pac-12 network. But if you can find it, if it lives out there somewhere, go watch Oregon State versus USC. It's a game that you will fall in love with Omar Spates and what he can do. He's all over the place against one of the best offenses in the country. He is making play after play after play. It's where I first noticed him, really. I'm watching the All-22, and I'm like, okay, this guy right here, He'll play on Sundays for a long time. He goes into the portal. I don't know if y'all remember this, but I was excited. I had no idea that he would even think about LSU. I'm like, man, if LSU can find a way to have a conversation with Omar Spates. I didn't know that him and Matt House had a tie. And lo and behold, he's here. He's in Baton Rouge. He went through spring. But I'm more excited to see what he does here in the fall. So, Mario, I agree wholeheartedly. That is a great pick that's going to be a standout linebacker who is going to allow Harold Perkins to be the X factor because if you didn't have an Omar Spates and you were counting on somebody else to play that position you couldn't allow Harold Perkins to do what he does now you're going to have Greg Penn there as well another veteran player so when you have two vets like that you can be creative with what you do with Harold Perkins he can line up as a stack backer on the line whatever you want him to do he can do that knowing you're going to have him covered with two veteran linebackers all right, Taylor, we'll go to you. M player you're most excited to see here in fall camp as we start. So when you when you brought this up, I was going to go Ovia Gofu because he might be the most important guy. Yeah. You know, that edge spot is kind of up for grabs. But I'm going to go to the offensive side of the ball. I'm going to go Caleb Jackson, highly recruit uh, touted four-star running back recruit out of right here in Baton Rouge. We saw a little bit of Trey Holly in the spring, what he could do. He got a lot of carries in that spring game. Caleb Jackson wasn't here in the spring, so I'm ready to see what he can do. I like that one as well. Um, I've heard his name probably more recently than I have even you know months ago. So leading up to it, that's a name that's certainly gaining steam. I mean, even in the chat, I think a couple of people mentioned his name as the player they're most excited to see. I, like for me, like I would go if I went like a position group, it'd probably be just like I want to see the corners. Like I just want to see what the corners look like. You're talking about four transfers that you're counting on with Denver Harris and J.K. Johnson, Alexander. 
Chestnut. That's a lot. Now, a lot of talent, but that's a lot of new. And it's guys that have done it at other places. They haven't done it here. So, I, like, if I was going, like, complete view, let me look at a position that I'm probably a little concerned about. Now, the talent's great. And I think individually, like, we've seen them make plays. But what what's it going to be like when they get together? But if I'm going, like, just a specific player, what about Aaron Anderson? The return game was crap last year. And I would use another word if I was on another show. I can't. But you know what I want to use. It was awful. It was terrible. It was it was something where not only was it not a weapon, it was a hindrance. Like, it, it was something like you had to hope and pray somebody caught a punt back there. And then if they caught it, you knew. Think about this. You knew you weren't going to return it. I think the longest return last year was 12 yards. And I might be giving you some yards there. I think it was 12 yards. I understand that with spread punt, it's not what it used to be. You can't be out there getting a, a, a long of 12 yards at a place like LSU. Not when you've had returners like Kevin Falk and Skylar Green and Trendon Holiday and Buster Davis and Chad Jones and Patrick Peterson and Tyron Matt. You can't have a 12-yard long on the season. And so, yes, a receiver in the slot, what, whatever they come up with him game plan-wise on offense, that's great. But on special teams, last year, it was an issue. I would say it cost you games last year. It cost you – I mean, I know it cost you the opener, right? You couldn't field a punt. Tennessee, I, I realize what the score was. You can't tell me the way that game started, it wasn't all downhill from there. Right, you can't catch a kickoff, and then all of a sudden here it comes. It's spiraling on you. Tennessee's in the end zone. You're down seven to nothing, and you never really gained your footing after that. Yeah, special teams needs to take a lot of pride from the start of the season, in my opinion. No question. Like, like you said, it was a liability. It needs to be an advantage from this fo- for this football team from the start. Got to set that tone in training camp. And, and look, there's a situation on the coaching staff where you've got a defensive line coach who is having to take a step back, personal uh, personal health issues, and we'll get into that. But now you're switching up some coaching on the special team side as well. Now you got a veteran coach in there, and you feel good about it. But like you have to make sure that special teams is a priority. And Brian Kelly and what he did this offseason showed you that it is a priority. He realizes what it was. I mean, special teams, a thousand percent lost you the first game. Muff punts, block field goals, block extra points. Like it is a phase of the game. And I'm, am I prideful about it? Yeah, absolutely. Right. Special teams, war daddies, like core, all four. You got to be out there because it is a part of the game. I've told you all this a thousand times. Let's make it a thousand and one. I have been on an NFL team that finished first in overall offense, first in overall defense, and didn't make the playoffs because we were 32nd in special teams. Think about that. It's never been done before in the NFL. A team in the NFL, National Football League, was first in offense, and first in total defense and didn't make the postseason because our special teams was so bad. What did that really like entail? Was that like bad execution, uh-huh. bad, bad job of the coaches, we like had, putting so personnel out there? How, our, how did that come to our be? Our very, very, very veteran snapper, it all started this way. Dave Ben got hurt, hamstring, tore it. We went through snapper after snapper after snapper. Guys, either the snap was slow, couldn't block. We had two snappers get punts blocked because they came right through the A-gap. We had so many punt blocks. We had so many kickoff returns for a touchdown against us. It was a mess. And that is a phase of the game that it matters. It counts. And so LSU last year, it was certainly in the return game. It was not a strength. It it wasn't even close to a strength. I mean, every single time you went out there, you weren't sure what was going to happen, right? They have tried to fix that. They've tried to fix it, bring in a new special teams coordinator, and also bringing in a guy that they think can be an elite returner in Aaron Anderson. We all know from the state of Louisiana, goes to Alabama, comes back to LSU, and he's going to be counted on. He's going to be counted on to, this seems so elementary, to catch the punt, but also have a long that is longer than 12 yards. So that is a player, yes, offensively, what can you do with him? But more importantly for me, what can Aaron Anderson be in the return game? Just one of many players that we're all looking forward to seeing out there. We'll go through maybe the freshman class here in a little bit throughout the show, just kind of give you an idea of who you're going to see for the first time in an LSU uniform because I know a bulk of the class has already been here, 
They've been through spring practice. That is something that is the norm now. But there is players like a, a Lance Hurd, right? Definitely looks better in 53 than anybody I've ever seen in an LSU uniform. He's going to be out there for the first time. I want to get eyes on that guy. That's a guy that thinks he is going to play this year with an offensive line that doesn't have a spot available for him. But I love the confidence. I love some of the quotes that he has. He's every bit of 6'6", 340 pounds, and it is not sloppy. I mean, that is a guy that is put together, feels like he is ready to play and help this team. We'll see kind of what his role is and excited to get eyes on him in an LSU uniform. Wow, Jake, what incredible takes. I mean, those guys, they're just the best. Uh, I think so. And if you think so, again, hit the like button, subscribe, ring the bell so you get notifications we post every single day here on OTB LSU.